Imagine this scenario. You go inside a thrift store and you come across this big book of stamps. Now these aren't just any normal stamps. These stamps have a gleaming surface of 22 karat gold. Now you might be thinking to yourself, did I just strike it rich? Like gold is almost $3,000 an ounce right now. It's at an all time high. Is there some way I can get the gold off of these stamps and profit? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna to try to find out in this video. And by the end, hopefully we will know if it's worth it to buy things like this at a thrift store. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now, I really do wanna emphasize that these stamps are replicas. And not only that, you can find dozens of these for sale on eBay. Heck, you can even pay $22,000 for this one if you wanted to. Yeah, these are actually super thin, like as thin as real stamps, basically. Now, just for fun, the first thing I wanted to do was to throw it on a gold testing machine to see if I can even get a reading, let alone 22 karat. So placing it down here on the metal plate and then applying the pen. Yeah, just as I suspected, there's absolutely no way this is going to test. Even folding it in half so there's technically gold on the bottom and on the top, I'm still not getting any sort of reading. And just to prove that this tester actually works, here's a 14 karat gold ring. So I thought maybe if I could scrape the paper off of the back where I could almost reach the gold layer, maybe it would test then. It was only then that I discovered that, wow, the gold on this thing is insanely thin. Like I would just pierce through it before I could even wow. see gold when shaving from below. Hmm. So I went over to my microscope and took a look at the stamp under that magnification. Wow. That really is insanely thin. So the first thing I was thinking is that there's a lot of paper on these gold stamps. So because of that, I don't want to necessarily just burn down the stamps directly. I want to see if I can remove the gold by itself while maybe getting rid of as much paper as I can. And the best way I could think to do that was simply by scraping the gold off. I'm just using a little graver here and I'm going to lightly press against the stamp. Not too much because I don't want to poke all the way through the stamp like before, but if I go just light enough, you can see I can remove the gold from the top. Now, as I start to scrape the gold off, I want to start collecting this somewhere. So I've been holding on to this little baby crucible forever. Like I normally don't use something this small for melting. But, you know, funny enough, I think this is actually the perfect time to use it. Yeah, you can actually see that there's little tiny gold specks inside the crucible. So with that, I'm just going to simply continue the mission of scraping off these stamps. You know, there's something actually kind of cathartic about doing this. So maybe I wouldn't recommend doing this if you have some sort of OCD because you're going to want to get every little tiny speck of gold, which is going to be either super time consuming or just kind of not practical. So I'm going to get, you know, as much as I can and just do my best to not worry about every little speck. Now, I'm not entirely sure that this is the best way to do this. I mean, maybe you could dissolve these in some sort of chemical or acid, do some sort of chemistry thing. But this feels like the most resource friendly way to do it, just to uh, scrape it off. But then again, they say that time is the most precious resource. So maybe this is actually the least resourceful way to do this. I mean, it's super satisfying even though it's probably a waste of time. Okay, so 
This whole thing started out very calm, but I'm getting impatient. <laughs> like, I just don't know if I have patience for this because I'm getting really anxious to melt. And I've done three. I wanted to do at least five, but you can see like, I'm starting to get super like reckless with my scraping. What started off as like mostly just little gold pieces has become a much greater mix of paper and gold. And that's just simply due to fatigue of doing this. Like, so it's not as many stamps as I wanted, but I think this should be good enough to see if this sort of experiment will even work. Before I melt it down, I actually want to glaze this baby crucible because I've never used it before. And the thing about these crucibles is that if they don't have some sort of protective coating on them, the crucible itself will want to absorb what you're melting down or whatever you're melting down will simply stick to it. And it becomes really hard to get any sort of good melt going. So I'm going to dump out the little gold specks and the paper. And in order to glaze a crucible, this is my favorite way to do it. So I first preheat the crucible with a torch, and then you want to use borax. Now, borax powder is the preferred method that I use for glazing crucibles. And after the crucible has been preheated a little bit, you're just going to want to sprinkle it lightly over the surface. And one thing that really helps is to take some tongs or something and as you're heating up the crucible to sort of tilt it one way or another and you can watch the borax as it's melted it sort of slowly glides around the crucible sort of like a magma flow or something as it starts to cool down it starts to make these cool like uh shattered planes Now that the crucible has been glazed, I'm going to put the gold specks and the paper back into it. And we're just gonna go ahead and try this and see what happens. Now, I don't wanna use my big torch for this because again, I'm afraid that it's just gonna kind of blow away. So I'm using my mini torch to provide kind of a softer flame at the beginning, a smaller flame. And that should do a good job at hopefully keeping everything inside the crucible. All right, so yeah, it's staying in the crucible, but it is not necessarily looking too great. I'm not super convinced. It's looking very ashy. Wow, so maybe I should have added even more borax to this melt. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some more now. I want to go ahead and add enough borax so that I can get some sort of flow going on in the bottom of the crucible. That way, when I pour it out, the gold or metal or whatever is in there can come out with the borax. I'm just going to try to pour out what I can. All right, so I just poured a couple of beads and they look really cool. Like, like these little borax beads look really beautiful. And at this point, I just need to dissolve it and break it up as much as I can to see what sort of metal is inside of it. Is there going to be any gold at all? Now, borax is water soluble. So with enough time, this should start to break down leaving behind, hopefully, some precious gold. So a lot of the smaller pieces did dissolve, but these larger ones are being super stubborn. And being the impatient man that I am, I really don't want to watch these things dissolve over the next three days. So I'm just going to go ahead and strain it over a paper filter, and we're going to see if we can find any gold in here. And then something truly unexpected happened. <laughs> What? There's a little piece of gold in there. <laughs> oh, there actually is some gold. Look at that. That is gold. What? That's right. I found the tiniest little piece of gold. This is so small that it won't even weigh on a scale. Oh man, that is hilarious. I'm gonna try to put it on my finger. I mean, it literally goes in one of the grooves of my fingerprint. Which means that this is a learning moment. Can I melt down these 22 karat stamps and profit? Well, the answer is probably not. If you ever see a gold object at the thrift store and you're wondering if it's real gold, there's a few things to consider. 
First is its solid gold. Now solid gold is gold that goes all the way through the piece, something like a ring or an ingot. Secondly, there's a couple of different ways to make something look like gold and even be able to claim that it is gold, even though it's just the very surface that has that gold. Now we already talked about gold leaf. There's also something called gold plating. Now gold plating is real gold that has been electroplated on top of an object. Just please remember that it is such a small amount on the very surface of an item that will not equate to much if you were to remove that gold. I hope this has been somewhat informative. Do me a favor and like this video and share it with 50 of your closest friends and family, and uh, I will owe you a basket of fries.